This is Reverend Kirk Lawton, minister at Ocean Lakes Family Campground, and this is our podcast. Our prayer is that this message may enrich your life as you find God especially meaningful to you. Thank you for worshiping with us. Throughout our land in America, and I'm sure other places around the globe, there are many preachers who are going to come into their pulpits and try to bring messages on some important subject. There will be those who will deal with deep and penetrating theological topics, like what we talked about last Sunday, regeneration or sanctification or substitutionary atonement of Jesus or the deity of Christ or on and on and on. Countless other preachers are going to seek to give a theological exposition on some great verse in the Bible or maybe a theme of the Bible. There will be those who will speak to some moral or social problem in their sermon as they seek to bring the message of God to bear in a problem-solving approach. The goal that I have set for myself in this message today is a very simple one. It is to try to answer the question which is phrased in the title of the sermon. How can I be sure I am a Christian? Now while this may be something that you do not discuss every morning at the breakfast table or when you're walking down the street talking to a, a stranger, surely this is a question that faces many people when they're in a more thoughtful mood. It's a good question, one which deserves an answer. Uh, You may be a church member, wherever it may be. Maybe you've been a member of some church for most of your life. But you somehow have the feeling that this in itself is not sufficient. Because there have been doubts, temptations, frustrations, all sorts of roadblocks in your spiritual experience. And you face those times when you need desperately to have the assurance that you are a Christian Are there any ways of checking up on yourself? If so, what are they? According to the Bible, I believe there are about three ways of testing yourself. Will you join me for these next few minutes and take this test? The first test is the willingness to take God at His word. In one of our hymns, we sometimes sing, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus.'" just to take him at his word. I think this is the first clear test you can make of your salvation, your willingness to take God at his word. In 1 John chapter 5, the author gives quite a lengthy statement on how faith in Christ can make a person confident, obedient, and loving. And then he caps all this off in verse 13 as he says, I have written like this to you who already believe in the name of God's Son so that you may be quite sure that here and now you possess eternal life. Of course, I think John here is referring to the words which he's just written. But really, in a larger sense, this might well apply to our entire Bible. What is the Bible anyhow? Let me try to put it in a nutshell. Someone, as John Redhead put, said it in these words, the Bible is the inspired record of the gradual unfolding of the character and the will of God, climaxing in Jesus Christ for the salvation of men and for the setting up of his kingdom, the kingdom of God. And so you see, the Bible is a means to an end. It is a path to God. But tragically, there are so many people who become so preoccupied with the path until they lose sight of the goal. That's God. What a pity it is when Christian people become so obsessed with arguing among themselves about the Bible until they fail to absorb the real message that God has for them through its pages. Now, I'll admit that critical analysis, textual examination, scholarly probing into the depths of the formation of the Bible, all these things have their rightful place. But after all is said and done, it is essential that the reader come back and accept what God's Word says, standing on that truth. 
Suppose you go to a doctor for a physical examination. Your doctor discovers a slight murmur in your heartbeat. But this doctor tells you that if you'll take proper rest and be reasonable in your activity, you really have nothing to worry about. But let's say you've always had a fear of heart trouble and you remind yourself over and over what a killer it is. So you refuse to believe what your doctor has said about your condition. And so you give up in despair. Now, the doctor knows a whole lot more than you do about your physical condition. The doctor's word carries more weight, has a right to be believed. And so if you're smart, you will accept that doctor at his word, you'll act on the instructions, and you'll forget your foolish fears. That's the way it is with being saved. God is the doctor. He knows far better than we do. And he says that we should trust ourselves to Jesus to save us. This is the first step toward knowing we're Christians, taking God at his word. But I believe there's a second, question, a second test we can give to know if we really are a Christian. This is the witness of the Holy Spirit. Now, this second indication that we're truly Christians is in the realm of your emotions. That first test, namely belief in God's word, was in the realm of your in intellect, your thinking. But now we move on to an area which is just as real, but not so well understood. The Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 16, for all who are moved by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And so we should not be like cringing, fearful slaves, but we should behave like God's very own children, adopted in the very family circle of God, and saying with a full heart, Father, my Father. For His Holy Spirit speaks to us deep in our hearts and tells us that we really are God's children. Now, before you write off any emotional religious experience as being synthetic or shallow or of the devil, let me invite you to examine very carefully what God's telling us here in His Word. The Bible says that it's possible to have the help of the Holy Spirit of God working within our own consciousness to give us a sort of inner knowledge. I think we've all seen so much of the perversion of emotionalism in religion <clears throat> until we may well be in danger of going to the other extreme and denouncing all emotion or working of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. I believe both extremes are wrong, but there is a middle ground here, a, a middle ground of truth, and it is a truth that we cannot cast aside unless we are so cold and insensitive that God cannot move or touch our hearts. The true child of God possesses a type of peace and contentment deep down inside which quietly and yet firmly reassures God is here, I am His, and He is mine. I think this is the kind of assurance that Paul had which enabled him to say, I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. But our assurance of salvation comes not only through, first, intellectual acceptance of God's word, not only through, second, emotional conviction of the abiding presence of Christ in the heart, but we also have a means of being sure that we're saved in a third way, and that is personal conduct which bears evidence. As a matter of fact, the Bible seems to give more weight to this test than to the others. Let me quote several Bible verses here. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Another verse. Not, every, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. Another verse. 
He that says, I know him, and keepeth not, keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. Hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. And these are just a few of many, many verses which speak the same message. You see, a person who takes his cue for living from God is going to live one way, while the person who never stops to consider what God wants is going to live another way. Some people today who want to have the assurance of salvation will say, you've got to have some kind of supernatural kind of power. You've got to have some kind of special gift, maybe the power to heal or to speak in tongues or something else. They seem to think that authenticity or reality is proved by extraordinary means. But the Bible says otherwise. How do you act at home? Are you generally critical of others? Are you making any progress in controlling your temper? Do you pay your debts? Is there anything of the Good Samaritan in you? Do you make it your business to be honest, kind, forgiving? Does your love go beyond lip service? Do you prove your love by your actions? What about those who are unlovely all around you? Can anybody tell from observing your life that you ever heard of a young man named Jesus who went about doing good? Or do you just go about? Now, even if you're able to answer all these questions satisfactorily, all this combined will not make you a Christian. But if you are a Christian, then it will necessarily show in your conduct. A 16-year-old girl was lying critically ill in a London hospital. She was the oldest child in a very large, very poor family. Her mother had died when the last child was born. And this young girl had spent her girlhood keeping house and mothering her younger brothers and sisters. She had been literally worked to death. Now she was paying for it with her very life. Her face was white and drawn. Her hands were rough with the hard work of the years. And one day there came a visitor to that hospital, a woman who seemed to have more religion than she had Christianity. She came to this little girl's room and began asking questions. Are you a member of a church? The little girl said, no, ma'am. Have you ever been baptized? No, I haven't. Have you ever gone to Sunday school? No, I have not. And this woman took a very serious view in this situation and possessing everything except tact and understanding, the woman said, well, honey, what will you do when you die and have to tell God all that? The young girl laid her two thin, work-stained hands on the bedspread hands that had been always kept busy in her labor of love for her little family. And then as she looked at the woman with dark eyes, too full of peace, too deep to be disturbed, the little girl replied very quietly, What will I do? I will show God my hands. And so we come back to the question with which we began this morning. How can you be convinced that you are a Christian? I think the answer of the Bible is threefold. First, take God at His word. Second, give God's Holy Spirit a chance to convince you of the truth. And third, check up on your life and see if it bears the marks of Christ. Will you pray with me? Oh God, if we know our hearts are right, we know many times we really want to be a Christian. We want to have that assurance of knowing that Jesus is mine, I am his. But there's so many doubts and questions that come to us. So we pray this morning, oh God, that in our own lives, you'll have your way with us. You're the potter, we're the clay. Mold us and make us after your will. 
while we are waiting, yielded and still. Thank you, Lord, for giving us Jesus and for his love for us. Help us to know when we submit to him that we truly are a Christian. This we ask in his name. Amen.